Lord, everybody. I'm so grateful to be here today. Glory to God. God is a good God. Amen. He is good. He is good. I thank you so much. I kind of such a privilege and an honor to be here today, honoring Apostle Larry and Wanda. <laughs> you, well, I say Wanda. <laughs> But thank you uh, so much. They have just poured into my life so much, and I just see them as my pastors because uh, I, I just love them and I need them, and they always uh, show love. So I just thank you so much. Um, you can go ahead and be seated. I do have something uh, for you, those of you who may want a copy of a book that I wrote called Overcoming Disappointments, Delays, and Setbacks as um, – was already stated. I've been, um, you know, I've actually been serving God for about 40 years. And in that time, I've had some prophecies and things that I've just expected God to do. But then there were a lot of disappointments. But during one of the main disappointments, I wrote this book and it really encouraged my heart. So if you've had some disappointments like that and you've been having some challenge in getting over them, see, Prophetess Felicia, wave your hand. She's got some of them, and uh, you can have a copy free, um, you know, and I hope that it blesses you. Glory to God. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't even know where to begin because just the presence of God is so here today, oh, but I'm going to pray, <laughs> and then we're going to jump right into the word of God today. Hallelujah. Father God, we just bless your name today. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Glory to God. Thank you so much for the reminder that it was the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God that cleansed us, that redeemed us. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for thank the power Lord. of the blood of Jesus. Yeah, Glory to so God. And Lord God, I empty myself of me today, and I yield to you, Father God, that the people would hear you as you speak through this vessel. We give you praise. We say, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. We give you glory. We yes, give you hallelujah. honor today. Glory. This is your time. Hallelujah. You speak to your sons and daughters what the Holy Spirit is prompting me to say today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. I, it, it, I was, as I was sitting there and the daughter was singing that song, The Blood of Jesus, I tell you, um, the Lord began to say the reason why there's so many uh, ministers out there that's just, you know, going and they're not really they're off course and all of these reasons is because they never sat under my shepherds they never had shepherds after my heart they never had anointed shepherds who drew the strength from the chief shepherd <laughs> they loved me but they never had shepherds they went from church to church and there there were there were false shepherds out there, meaning that um, they took the position, but they were not called and anointed uh, to love my sheep the way that they, that I want them loved. And so uh, they're really hirelings because they're in it for selfish reasons. You know, the, 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 the money and and, and, the, and the, the fame and the way it looks, you know, and they've been educated and all. But just missing that one thing is the anointing to shepherd my people. Glory to God. My sheep that I purchased with my own blood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I have called and chosen and anointed shepherds after my heart. But when my people run from church to church trying to find someone who gives a good word. Sometimes they miss what they need in that time of grooming and teaching and training and feeding and nurturing and, and praying. Oh, they miss that. That's important. 
it, it is so vitally important because there are many shepherds who should be evangelists. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there are many shepherds who really should be in a church helping another shepherd. <laughs> so they're out of place. But they're trying to, 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 to shepherd people without the shepherd's anointing. You cannot do that. <laughs> it doesn't work. The sheep will scatter. And they will not be prepared for what God has called them to, to, to do and, and who God has called them to be. And so God said to Israel, like the daughter says, I'm going to give you shepherds after my heart. Mm-hmm after my heart. Glory to God. And so I want to talk to you today, and this is like a twofold message, uh, because the first part of it is about the heart and the value of a good shepherd. But the second part of it is about the coming wealth. And I'm like, I don't know how this is going to come together. But we were sitting in the car, and the daughter said, well, you know what? God will give you one scripture, like everything flows with that I'm like that is it yes that is it and so the scripture that he gave me was John 10 and 10 but I'm going to go ahead and read from verses 10 through 16 and so if you have your Bibles turn with me to St. John uh, chapter 10 I'm going to start reading at verse 10 but I'm reading from the New King James Version and it reads the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they, talking about the sheep, may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Good, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus wanted us to know that there are shepherds after my heart, oh, my heart, and they will walk in the same anointing that is on me as Christ the shepherd. You'll recognize them because they're give, they will give of their selves, their lives, for you glory to God but I also want you to know that there is one who may mimic that title or shepherd but he's not a real shepherd he's called a hireling because he doesn't really care about you he really cares about himself the status what it looks like how are they going to be pouring into me? How are they going to be serving me? But he's not there when the sheep are going through trouble. And they need someone to pray with them. And they need someone to stay up all night with them. The hireling is not going to do that. No. But the good shepherd, he said, I'm going to pray you through this thing. We're going to believe God for you through this thing. Glory to God. So uh, uh, the Lord was just impressing upon me on, in this message. Now what would the shepherds desire for you? As I begin to, to think about how Jesus said, I've come that you would have life more abundantly. He said, I want you to have a good life. I want you to prosper. I want you to enjoy life while you're doing 
my father's will. And so, there's been a lot of talk about preachers that prosper with the planes and all of that stuff. Now, God wants the pastors to prosper. But what the world has a problem with is that if you are prospering, but your people are struggling. <laughs> we understand that you deserve to have money and nice cars and things like that. But how can a true shepherd keep drawing from all of the people and the people are struggling and they keep telling them, God's going to bless you, God's going to bless you. But they don't really care to see you blessed and prosperous. <laughs> well, I come to tell you today that you're doing a good thing blessing your shepherds. But God's got a blessing for you. <laughs> God says, I'm going to pour out upon the house wealth, glory to God, that my people have not enjoyed up to this point. There is a coming wealth. Jesus said, I've come that you would have life and that more abundantly. In the Old Testament, the word of God says that he delights in the prosperity of his servants. <laughs> when God blessed Abraham, God says, Abraham, I'm going to give you the son that you desire. But I'm also going to bless you with substance. <laughs> Glory to God. Solomon get, went before the, for the Lord with his heart, said, God, I just got a heart for your people. Teach me how to be a leader. Show me, give me wisdom. I don't even know how to go out and come in amongst your people. I want wisdom, God. Show me how to lead your people. And the Lord says, this thing pleases me. Not only am I going to give you wisdom, but you are going to be the richest man that ever lived. <laughs> He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for wealth and riches. But God said, because you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give it to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord, you know, Moses began to ask God, says, God, show me. Show me who you are. Show me your glory. He said, I'm going to pass by you. You're going to see all of my goodness. You're going to see my mercy. You're going to see how good I am. But that's not the picture that the world has today of our God. We see him as a God where we only, we have to struggle all the time. Everything is so hard. Everything is so difficult. And we keep pressing and we keep pressing. But the Lord wants us to know today there is something on the other side of this press. There are the blessings, glory to God, that you never enjoyed before. There is a more than enough, glory to God. There is the exceeding and abundantly above and beyond all that we can ask or think. Glory to God. The Lord is saying if you can believe it, you can receive it. Glory to God. He's saying your heart is right. Glory to God. You love me. There is no child of God who do not love him and enjoy his presence. Glory to God. And just want more of him. Glory to God. God is saying, but you're my children. And I want more for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we talk about how the, the word of God says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He said, all the silver is mine all the gold, but we are kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. What father would not come through for their sons or daughters? I believe that this is a time that there is a coming wealth now. Glory to God. The wealth that we've heard about that was laid up for the just. 
Glory to God. You know, the world is concerned about an economic downturn and things are, uh, the gas prices are high and the food is high and they're concerned and rightly so. But the sons and daughters of God, glory to God, are going to experience the abundance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. Glory to God. He is God, the faithful God that keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. Hallelujah. And keep his commands to a thousand generations. He is a good God. Glory to God. He said, I'll do exceeding and abundantly more above all that you can ask or think. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. No have entered into the heart of men the things that I prepared for them that love me. Glory to God. He's saying that you can have it, sons and daughters. Glory to God. You know, I was thinking about that scripture where, uh, you know, Jesus was talking uh, with his disciples and he was talking about the rich man. And we heard that as I was coming up, you know, you see it's harder for the rich man, uh, 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 to, it's harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of heaven. But a lot of people, they don't recall the response of the disciples what did they say? Well, who then can be saved? It was as though they were saying, well, I'm rich, and I'm rich. We're all rich. If a rich man can't enter into kingdom, in the kingdom, who can? He said, with men this is impossible, but not with God. Glory to God. We've missed out on the wealth somehow, uh, and God has put great vision in the heart of his true shepherds. He's put great vision because they love the people. They want to help more people and they want to see more people coming into the kingdom of God and be nurtured and fed and grow up in the Lord. But there's been a, a, a lack of finances. And God wants us to know that uh, I'm going to bless my people. How did he bless Solomon when the house was built? David, when he got ready to build the house, David had already stored up. But, but there was so much that was coming into the house for the building. They had to count silver as worthless. They said, we ain't even going to count silver no more. It's just too much. <laughs> it's just an overflow. How is God going to bless this house? <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going to bless the people. Glory to God. And the people are going to bring and to give glory to God because there will be an overflow because of the goodness of God. He's a good God. He's a good God. You know, I, I the Lord, some, a few years ago, just began to deal with my heart concerning marketplace ministry. And, uh, and, and, and reaching, reaching people in the areas of the seven mountains of culture. And I believe it is uh, the spirit of evangelism that God wants to flood the earth with as he released people out into the marketplace. Glory to God. So he just spoke and impressed upon my heart. I want you to start a business and I want you to help my people because business matters. They don't have the books together. They don't have their stuff together. If I would pour in the finances, they wouldn't be able to manage it because they don't have the stuff together. So he said, I want you to help my people. And so I, I, I started doing that and I said, well, God, you're talking about accounting and bookkeeping and I got a degree in that but you know when you're messing with people money God yeah I don't know about that Lord but but what I begin to see is that those God was putting it on many people's hearts to start a business to start a business and it, it's been a it was a dream and a vision in their heart but they didn't have the courage to step out in faith and so there were people that came to me and I I showed them what to do and we got them started. But to their surprise, as they started stepping out in there, God started stepping out with them. <laughs> he started speaking to their hearts and they got all excited. And so what, 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 he, what he did for some started out bringing in a small amount. Within six months to a year, 
was bringing in a half a million dollars. And they're like, what, what, what? And God is saying, don't be surprised at this. I got wealth for my people, but they're not ready to receive it because they really don't believe that I love them enough to allow them to manage millions. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't believe me. They don't believe that I'll be that good to them. Glory to God. When I started, uh, as I began to move forward, and I had clients that would give me big amounts, and I'm like, this is too much for this. God says, why are you frowning at that? And God is saying, I got to deal with the mentality of my people because they're letting the world have all the finances. And, and my, my ministers that have great vision, they're struggling and believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. And year after year after year, they slowly get in a little bit of money. And God is saying, there are people in their midst who's got the skill set to become business leaders. There are people in the midst who got the skill set to do more than what they're doing. And I will bless them. Because I'm good. But God, he, he, he has to deal with the mentality of his people. Glory to God. We sat under good shepherds. We're not greedy. We're not selfish. We love God. Hallelujah. And he loves us. Glory to God. Someone told me once, <laughs> you know, they said, everybody that knows you know how much you love God. But God also wants others to know how much he loves you. <laughs> what does it look like for our God that we serve? I love him, I love him, I love him. But people cannot see how much he loves you. Oh, he's a good shepherd. Glory to God. He's a good shepherd. Glory to God. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David knew who the good shepherd was. Glory to God. He knew that he was good. Glory to God. He's not a God who wants his people to only suffer, suffer, suffer and never experience the abundance, glory to God, that he has for his people. He is good. He is full of goodness, glory to God. Full of goodness, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God. His mercy endures forever. You may say, well, I'm not really qualified, but his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Well, you may say, well, I don't have much talent and skill set, but his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. His mercy endures forever. The psalmist said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because our God is a good God. Can you believe him? Glory to God for the abundance. Can you believe that it is as Jesus said? It is the thief that has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you would have life and that more abundantly. It means to the full, till it overflows. Glory to God. You wonder why the enemy attacks the souls of those who have been wounded so much. John said to Gaius, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Gaius was his son in the faith, but Gaius had a prosperous soul. He was 
walking in the truths of God's word, but to the wounded and the broken. It's a challenge to do that because you begin to see yourself as less than uh, uh, that, that which God sees you. Begin to see yourself, you begin to see yourself as the rejected, uh, as the broken, as the one that constantly goes through and just can't get it together. You got all these issues, but God is saying, you are not the rejected anymore I have chosen you glory to God and not cast you away you are the chosen and once you are chosen you are no longer the rejected glory to God I want your soul to prosper and I want you to prosper in every single area of your lives glory to God oh Rabakaseke. can you believe in his goodness today can you believe in his mercy today? Can you believe that he is El Shaddai, our God who is more than enough? Can you believe that he can put wealth and riches and honor in your hands? Glory to God, for he knows that you will sow. Oh, oh, the Apostle Paul in, to the, in his letter to the Corinthians, uh, he said uh, that, that, that God, uh, hallelujah, gives seed uh, to the sower. And he will multiply your seed so, And he will increase the fruits of your righteousness. Glory to God. But he said if you're not a sower or a giver, he's not going to put that money in your hands because he multiplies. He gives seed to the sower. Oh, God. We're sowing. But God says, I want you to reap. What would it look like a farmer that goes out there and he put all the seed in the ground and he waters it, but he never expects a harvest. So he would not enjoy that fruit. The Lord God told Adam, he says, I'm going to give you seed. And as long as you have seed, your need will be met. Every need. Glory to God. Because it's in the seed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said your provisions are in the seed. Glory to God. The Lord began to speak to me a few years ago. And, I mean, and he was talking about just building a wealthy church. He said, I don't want a poverty church. I want a wealthy church. That, that reflects who I am. You know, I am a rich God. You know, the streets are paved with gold. We are called kings and priests unto our God. And the first thing he said was, my church must understand the principle of sowing and giving. He said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will. Glory to God. If there's a seed time, there's a harvest time. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he's a good God. And then the second thing that he told me, he said a wealthy church is a church to have marketplace leaders. There are business leaders in the midst. There are business leaders. People are in business to make money. They're not in business just to serve and have no fruit. He said they're business leaders in the midst. And when these business leaders rise up, and step out in faith and quit working for somebody, they're going to see a harvest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God, you know, sometimes we sow, but we really don't expect to see that harvest. We don't even think about it. We did, and I probably shared this before. I don't know. Uh, some of you have heard it, but, you know, when we, we, uh, we had to give up our church uh, years ago, our church building that was years ago, and we, uh, we really didn't know where we were going, but we had uh, a, a hundred chairs. We had bought a hundred nice chairs. We paid three thousand dollars for them. We got ready to leave. You know, person with over our finances. He said, "I believe we we're supposed to just sew them." And we took all of our stuff in there and we sewed it. We advertised. This church came. I mean, they were shouting. Oh, they was praising God because they got a hundred free chairs they, and and all of the other stuff they had been believing God for it. So then we, we got into another uh, building, and we only had the little mitts max chairs, and we're like, oh, wow, this don't look good, God. 
We only had a, a, a few people. So I said, well, God, we sold uh, those, th those chairs. But Father God, we, let's, Lord, we just, I just thank you, God, for multiplying our seeds sown. We, I didn't spend a lot of time praying about it. We just, we just, you know, so let's just believe God. And after that, it wasn't that long that a daughter had a lawsuit that she was in, that they settled in that lawsuit. And she came to me and she said, I was pastored and she said, Pastor, I got something for you. I said, what you got, baby? She held her hand out like this. It was a check for $30,000. <laughs> That's a small seed to sell 3000 and get back 30000 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We was able to get all the new chairs. We were able to replace our sound equipment and everything. And, and we had a, some put together. And I'm like, put left over God. You're a good God. He said, my people don't apply the principles. They don't expect nothing, so they don't get nothing. Oh, God. That was a blessing. Hallelujah. It was a blessing. Glory to God. But you know what? He had to bless somebody in the midst to get it to us. <laughs> now, she had $300,000, but we got the 30000 because that was her type. Can you understand what, 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 we're trying to, what we're just trying to get over across to you today? Glory to God. He's a big God. He's a great big God. Glory to God. And it, and, it, and, it, and it is his heart. Glory to God. It's the heart of the true shepherd. Peter told uh, the others, he said to the elders and those, those of you that are shepherding the, the, the flock of God, he, he, he dealt with the heart and motive and he says, listen, don't do it for filthy lucre. Don't do it to try to lord it over, over my people. He said, don't do that. You know what? Be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd come, you know, you know, he, he's going he's gonna to judge you. He's going to reward you. So he dealt with that. But I tell you what, there is a, it's a, it's a real important need for true shepherds. That's, 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 that's real, really important because when God deals with the soul and he starts healing that soul and he starts setting that right, he can prosper us. <laughs> He can prosper us. Mm -hmm. See, because the soul is right. You know, the mind is renewed with the word of God. Glory to God. Uh, uh, the will is surrendered and submitted to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the emotions are brought under control. Your emotions can really get out of whack. You know what? But instead of the sadness and the sorrow and the grief and all of the stuff and the loneliness and why, why this, why God, you know, you got the joy of the Lord. Glory to God. And you're choosing as an act of your will to rejoice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Like the word of God says, and again, I say rejoice. Glory to God. So you're causing your emotions like, wait a minute. You may have had some bad things happen to you. But no, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you're going to love whether you feel like it or not. Glory to God. You're going to forgive whether you feel like it or not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you're walking in truth. The force of the love of God is on the inside of you. Glory to God. You don't have to go with your feelings and emotions. He is saying this force is inside of you. It is greater than the powers of darkness. It's greater than what you feel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you're saying my soul is prosperous. Oh God, my mind is renewed. I rejoice in you on a daily basis my will is surrendered and submitted to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ you put money in my hands if you said I need you to give a thousand dollars I'm going to give that thousand dollars and I'm not going to think nothing about it because God is a good God I'm a channel through which he can flow I'm a vessel glory to God that he wants to use to bless somebody hallelujah and you know what it is what a selfish thing to think in terms of God just bless me and my family. I only need enough for me and my family. Lord, you just take care of my needs. That is so selfish. What about the man and woman of God? 
What about the church that you're a part of that's, that's, that's got a building fund going on? What about your brothers and your sisters who are in lack and who are in need? So why does God want us to be able to receive of him? He's a good God and he wants others to know that he's good. Glory to God. That he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're not out here begging for our needs to be met. Glory to God. But we're saying, I have more than enough. Here, here, take some of mine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here, I want to bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you know what? If you don't have it, you can't give it. You can't give what you don't have. You cannot. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. A true shepherd wants to see the people blessed. A true shepherd wants to see the people blessed spiritually, naturally, and, and health-wise. Yeah. A true shepherd wants to see that. He doesn't want to see the people that he's pastoring sick and afflicted. He doesn't want to see them having trouble, trouble in the relationships. He doesn't want to see them getting put out of their homes with nowhere to go. No, that's not the heart of a true shepherd. Glory to God. But there is a coming wealth, I believe, to the body of Christ. I believe it's a supernatural wealth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because when you see the enemy doing all this stuff, God's not going to sit by and say, that's so sad. No. God said, uh-uh. We want the world to see who I am. That's what he did with Pharaoh. Had his little snakes running around there. And Moses with the rod ate up his snakes. We've seen all this stuff that happened now. We've seen the covenant 19. We're seeing many people dying. We're seeing the murders and all of these things that are happening. And then we are starting to see an economic downturn. But there's going to be an economic shift, I believe, for the body of Christ. I believe it with my whole heart. There's going to be an economic shift. And we're going to have the wealth. And we're not going to be studying the devil that's trying to make us believe we don't supposed to have it. Because he's a thief. Jesus said he comes first and foremost to steal. <laughs> he said... The enemy wants to rob us of our health. He wants to rob us of our sound mind. He wants to rob us of our substance so that we're left with nothing. That's not what God wants. That's not what the true shepherd wants. Glory to God. He loves us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There is, uh, I was just thinking about when that COVID-19 was happening and I was getting that scripture about there's things that was being shaken now. But, but a part of that scripture says that everything that cannot be shaken will remain. Oh, my, my, my. If you're still here, glory to God. You are one of the ones that God wants to well to, 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 to bless and to prosper and, 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 and that, that the kingdom of God will be manifested in this earth. His kingdom. Glory to God. His kingdom. His authority. We were in our, our, our Monday night prayers when Monday night we're just listening to the Lord. And the Lord, Lord was saying, I need my power back in my church. Uh, he said the enemy is running rapid. He said, but I've got people in the marketplace. I've got people in the church. And they're letting the devil do all this stuff when I've given them authority. I've given them authority in the earth. Glory to God. And he says, apartment complexes. People, you know, I, begin to, I saw a vision of God's people. They were just slumped. They just slumped over. They were slumped over. And it grieved the heart of God. Because he said, my church is supposed to be a church of power. He said, I ain't talking about just the building. I'm talking about wherever they go. They are carriers of my anointing. You know, they, they cast out devils through my name. 
they break the powers of darkness off of cities and, and regions. Yes, he said, I need my people to come forward. So that's what we've been praying. We've been praying for the, for the, the, the glory of God to return to the houses of worship and return upon his people that they will begin to come forward in the power and the anointing and the authority uh, that God has given them. But that is also including wealth and riches and honor. It is time now to put the devil under our feet. He, he doesn't own the finances. That belongs to God. He said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It belongs to the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. He said all the silver is mine, all the gold is mine. It doesn't belong. Devil, you've been mistaken. It doesn't belong to you. You stole what you got because you're a thief. <laughs> but it's coming back into the hands of the people of God, those who are in the church, those who are in the marketplace. It's coming back. And I'm speaking it. Glory to God. I'm declaring it. Glory to God. My heart is right. This is not just for those uh, uh, pastors and teachers and apostles and so forth. It's for the church. Glory to God. It's for the church. Glory to God. Somebody say, it's for me. My heart is right. I love my father. I love Jesus. And I love people. And I want to help the people that are struggling. I want to help my church. I want to be a blessing. Because that's what God wants. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. That is what he wants. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But he needs our faith. He needs our faith because faith begins where the will of God is known. If we know that it's the will of God, if we believe that it is the will of God, glory to God. You know, I, as I begin to listen to the Lord and he's talking about getting this gospel out, you know, he said this gospel must be heard throughout the world and then the end will come. The gospel is good news. It's not bad news. It's good news. Glory to God. But who was the first group of people that Jesus said he was anointed to preach the gospel to? The poor. <laughs> when I looked that word up, it did not include just the poor spiritually. It included the poor spiritually, the poor in health, the poor in substance. It just included poverty. If you ever walked into I drove through a neighborhood and it was just poverty. It just was poverty. Old, old cars in the yard and just everything was like poverty. Wherever you see poverty is demonic oppression. It is demonic oppression. Most cases, that ain't cause you suffering for the Lord. It's demonic oppression. <laughs> He's the one that wants to keep you at a low place. He's the one that wants to steal from you everything you got. He's the one that want to make you have to rob Peter and pay Paul. That's the devil's doing. That's not our God's doing. No, no. You will not find a Jew who believes that it's the will of God for them to be poor. You won't find it. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says, I have learned in whatever state that I'm in to be content. He had to learn that. See, because they was used to being having, having wealth. He had to learn to be content when he didn't have. <laughs> it's a sad day when God's people have to learn to receive of his goodness. <laughs> but we have to learn 
that when it's more than enough, it's okay. Glory to God. You have to learn that when you serve and you're doing the will of God and somebody says, you've been a blessing to me and I'm, I'm going to give you $5,000, you have to learn that. Ooh, 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 God, is this okay? Is this okay? You got to learn. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we have to learn it because God has so many ways to bless and prosper his people. But, but there's some that has just kind of messed it up a little bit because they made it seem like that only God only wanted the pastors and the, and the preachers and the ministers uh, to be blessed. And while the people just gave and gave and gave, but there was no change. God said, I don't work like that. I want the people blessed and I want my leaders blessed. I want my people prosperous and my leaders prosperous. We're all in this together. Hey, they, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. He don't have no picks where he say, I'm going to bless you, but you can't have it. No, he doesn't have that. Uh-uh. <laughs> he says, you're mine. Glory to God. I love you because you accepted my son. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We receive his son. But religion, religion to have you having a hard time receiving the gift of righteousness, uh, religion to have you having a hard time receiving anything that you didn't earn. <laughs> but Jesus earned it. <laughs> he paid the price for it. Said in, in, in Corinthians, the apostle Paul says, Jesus was made poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Mm -hmm. Go check that scripture out. Check the whole passage out. What was he talking about? He was talking about there was a special grace upon some that even in their need, they was giving and sowing. He's talking about natural stuff. He wasn't talking about spiritual stuff. Now, we know, you know, that spiritually, we, we, we appreciate the fact that we're rich spiritually. But he wasn't talking about that in that passage. Mm. So charge them that are rich in this world that they be not proud or high minded. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. But that they would give. He didn't say charge them that are rich that you get rid of all your riches and you be poor. Then you're going to be humble. That devil is a lie. <laughs> That is not humility. <laughs> that is poverty. Disguised as humility. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus said, if you continue in me and my word, you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. You'll come into freedom. You'll come into liberty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You'll come into awareness and awareness of what God has for you. Glory to God. You'll come into awareness that some of the things that you may have accepted as God was really just the devil and his, his poverty spirits uh, trying to hold you down and to oppress you because he wants to rob you of your joy. Israel was oppressed under the hand of Pharaoh. They was under oppression. And Jesus said, I'm searching everywhere. And I see this land flowing with milk and honey. Now I'm going to bring you into this land. But first I got to teach you now how to think. And he started teaching them. But instead of them changing their mindsets, they kept looking back at Egypt. Well, you know what? At least we was taken care of. And he could not seem to get them to change their mindset. He said, that's all right. I'll wait till another generation comes up. They'll take the land. They'll take the territory. Because I'm bringing you into this land. You're going to have to take it. <laughs> Ooh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violent take it by force. He said, you're going to have to take it. Glory to God. <laughs> you take it by force. Glory to God. How do you take it? The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith. 
Glory to God. He said, however you receive Jesus, that's how you live in this kingdom. Glory to God. You believe it in your heart. Glory to God. You speak it with your mouth and you take it by force. Glory to God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I'm getting mine. I'm taking it by force. Not so I can lay up somewhere on a beach and say, oh, I'm rich. No. Mm -mm. There's work to be done. The gospel needs to get out. Too many people suffering. Too many people struggling. Somebody needs to know that God cares. Glory to God. Somebody needs to know he cares for, for them. Glory to God. I love giving. I love blessing people because I love to see the smile on their face. Glory to God. I, had, I went to a restaurant and there was this young lady. It was a long line. You know, she was by herself. I was by myself. And, you know, she says, uh, and she just struck up a conversation. And, and she says, you can, she says, uh, I, I, they're call, if they call me first, then I'll ask them, to, can you sit with me? I didn't ask her that. She did. So, so, so okay, we just sat and we just talked, you know, and everything, you know. Um, and I just began to listen to see if she knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And from the conversation, I could tell that she did it. And uh, just listening, okay, God, what do, you, what, what do you want me to do? You know, she ordered a whole bunch of stuff, you know. And so when we got ready to go, the Lord says, you know, tell her, you know, that you're going to pay for her meal and tell her I said for you to do that. And that's what I did. She's like, oh, are you sure? I said, the Lord said to do this. But you know what? I couldn't do that if I had the money. <laughs> he cannot really speak to you and tell you to do this if you don't have it <laughs> so I'm like uh, okay put the smile on her face mm -hmm. you know as I begin to tell her the Lord said this I'm a child of the living God God wants to bless you today they need to know that the father loves them they need to know that he cares. And it can't be just lip service. You got to put action <laughs> to your faith. He's a good God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. I, this, I, I, this is what God wanted me to share with you. Um, he has wealth. Glory to God. I have I've seen God do miracles for people just because of his love. I've seen God turn businesses around. And, it, and God bless them. They grow so fast and they're like, whoa, what? I, I didn't even know that. But it was God. You know, I, I've seen economic shifts. That's what I really believe that God is wanting to do in the body of Christ in this time and this season. An entire economic shift where people go from a low level to a high, high level almost overnight. I believe that that's really what he wants to do. I've seen that. And I want to pray for you uh, for this. If you desire to be a blessing to the body of Christ, uh, even, even more so to these pastors, because one of the very first seed that we sowed and we saw God shift things overnight. It was a seed into the lives of our pastors because it was their anniversary and we wanted to bless them, but we didn't have a dime. We couldn't give them nothing. And it was in our hearts. We're like, God, you know? And so me and my husband and Tommy says, God, mm, we got nothing. And we said, Lord, both of us had it in the heart. If we just had $500 well, that same week before the anniversary was over, the Lord gave him a job that paid, it was two hours of work for $600. <laughs> wow. He was trying to start his business, but he didn't have the money or the clients. But we took that $600. He paid his tithe on it. And he gave the 500 to the pastors. 
And within that year, he went from one client to 13 clients. And God shifted him. And the next, the next, and a few years later, and I was working, and I felt the Lord wanted me to come off my job. But I said, God, you're going to have to tell him. And his business had started, you know, he was making about $35,000 a year. And the Lord spoke to him, and he said, if you let her come off her job, I will triple your salary in one year. And he did. In one year, he's making over $100,000 a year. I'm sharing this testimony because it helps our faith. A sister had moved to Greensboro. She needed a job. She said, will you pray for me to get a job? I prayed for her to get a job. She got a job. She started. She was making minimum wage. Well, on that job, she went, she took up a class, took a class, online class. They shifted her into a position, and she was making like about $50,000 a year. So she went that minimum wage, but that wasn't enough. Within a couple of years, she was making over $100,000 a year. God specializes in shifts. We don't want to sell him short. I see him do that. My son, he had lost a job. He had no job. He was staying at home. I was out walking, you know, and he, he would go looking, but he just, he wasn't good at resumes and filling out things like that. So I was walking. I said, God, he is a grown man. He's your responsibility, not ours. Why are we taking care of him when he's grown man? I said, God, you get him a job. <laughs> well, during that time, he, he got up and he said he felt like he was supposed to go to the unemployment office. Well, he went to the unemployment office, but he ran into a friend who was a supervisor at another job. He said, hey, you looking for a job? He said, yeah, man. He said, listen, go out, come out here where I work. And he went out there, and it was the highest paying job he ever had, and they hired him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter was making almost minimum wage. She couldn't keep her apartment. She had to move back home. So she moved back home. She was really, I think she was making like maybe about 10 or $11 an hour. So we was praying for her. And my niece called me and said, hey, why don't you tell Chanel, why don't she go to the post office? You know, they, they, they hire, you know, they're hiring, you know, and so forth. She went to the post office. Uh, she went online and put in an application. Didn't even have a phone. She only had an email. They emailed her for an interview. She came in for an interview. They hired her, started her out with $22 an hour. They said, we're going to give you another raise, you know, in six months. And they kept giving, keep, kept giving her a raise. So she made more money now than she ever made in her entire life. So she was able to buy a new car and a condo. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's not just the message that I'm sharing. I'm saying that God wants to do this thing. And he wants us to know that he cares enough about us. Glory to God. To bless and prosper us. There is a coming wealth. Glory to God. And he's saying, my people are going to get it. They've been patient. They've suffered. They love me. It's coming out of the hands of the wicked. And it's going to be put in the hands of my sons and daughters. Because they are the kings and the priests. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm, one more testimony. We had this lady in our church. And she, her lights kept getting off. She kept getting put out of her house. And she didn't have a place to go. And so, we kept praying for her. So I told my son, my son has that economics anointing on him as well. I said, will you and your wife take her and just talk to her and pray with her and just whatever God do. They, they talked with her. They prayed for her. They believed God with her. Well, how about they discovered she has some money somewhere. And so she gets this huge sum of money. 
So she was able to pay off all her debt, buy her a new house, and she had a bunch of money left over. Sadly, her heart must not have been right because after she got that money, she left the church. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. It's okay, God. That's your problem, not mine. You know, we, we, we do what we do because we know that the Lord's will is that his people would prosper and be in health even as his soul prospers, you know. But we've been coming up, we've been coming up short, you know. And so what, what, what I, I'm seeing now is that once the ball get rolling, once it starts in the church, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. And the, and the, and the, and the prosperity is so on the house. We had, uh, with, with our church, everybody was having run down cars and we're like, God. And I walked out there in the parking lot park, and the Lord says, pretty soon everybody in the car, in, in, in every car in the parking lot, everybody in the church is going to have nice cars. And I'm like, uh, I didn't think I was hearing God on that, you know, but <laughs> but, it, but it happened, you know, and so that one of the brother, uh, brother came and the Lord spoke to him to connect with us and he said, he walked out in the parking lot and the Lord said, this is what you connected with. He said, man, all I saw was Beamers and Mercedes and Lexuses and, you know, he's like, what? Oh my God. Because God is a good God. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a good God. And we give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because he is good. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much that you are a God of prosperity. We thank you, Father, that you love us. We love you. Glory to God. We're about your business, hallelujah. We're not trying to hoard up money for ourselves. We're not trying to do any of that stuff, but we belong to you. Glory to God, hallelujah. We are kings and priests unto you, glory to God. So I pray for this congregation, Father God, for that economic shift in the people's finances and, these, and, and, and Lord, just let them see your goodness. Let them see your mercy. In this particular area, we've seen your goodness as far as healing is concerned. We've seen your goodness spiritually, God, where we're able to bask in your presence. Now you want us to see your goodness, prosperity, well, as far as wealth and prosperity is concerned. Same God, same anointing. <laughs> Glory to God. Father God, I pray now for this shift economically, for this abundance, for this overflow, and everything that's been held up, Lord, I call for that supernatural release. Now, Satan, I take authority over you now. I bind and take authority over spirits of poverty and lack and debt by the authority of the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names. We command you to take your hands off. Loose the finances. They don't belong to you. They don't belong to you. We command you by the authority of that great and mighty name of Jesus. Now angels, we charge you to go now and cause the money to come. You are ministering spirits. You are sent to minister on our behalf. We charge you to go now. From north, south, east, and the west. Call somebody to come. Open doors that no man can shut. Glory to God. Open up supernatural doors uh, 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 for uh, new positions of jobs, uh, new businesses. Glory to God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We thank you for business leaders. We thank you, Lord, for those who are called to the mountain of education. We thank you, Father, for those, glory to God, who are called to the mountain of family and, and arts and entertainment and media, glory to God, and even government, glory to God. We thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. 
We give you praise. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, you're the one that said, I have come that you would have life and that you would have it more abundantly. You're the one who said that it is the thief that came to steal, kill, and to destroy. You said, ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance. You said, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. No good thing would you withhold from them that walk uprightly. Glory to God. You said, all the silver is mine. All the gold is mine. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We belong to you. We worship you, Jesus. Pour out your blessings. Pour out your blessings. Pour out your blessings. We thank you, Father, for changing our quality of life where we represent you as kings and priests unto our God. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you now for the breaking loose. We thank you that you're Lord of the breakthrough. We thank you. Glory to God. You are full of goodness. You are full of mercy. Hallelujah. Come on, we're just going to receive now. We receive of you, Jesus. We receive of you, Jesus. We receive your goodness. We receive of you, Jesus. You open doors that no man can shut. You open doors that no man can shut. All for your glory. All for your glory. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We're coming out of those barren places we're coming out hallelujah of those places of poverty we're coming out and we're coming into the abundance we're coming into the overflow we're coming into the more than enough the more than enough the more than enough, you are El Shaddai. El Shaddai is who you are. Glory, 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 glory. We worship you, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you. Little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hayamaradiasi baradiasi. Robo shike baba baba yasata. Some of you have got much seed in the ground, much seed. Receive the abundance. Receive the much fruit. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Oh, Rabashike Batukata. Shata. Roshike Baba Baba Baba. Monrosata. Roshima Baba Baba, yes, it. 
Oh, We break through any poverty mindsets. We break through, we break through, we break through. I can see myself as the son and daughter of the king. I can see myself as an heir of God. I can see myself as a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Maria Sota Rosa. Roche Mababa. Yes, there's some break. There's something breaking through. Break. There's a breakthrough in the realm of the spirit. That's why we're raised worshiping. There's a breakthrough in the spirit. Reko Shabada Kase. Robo Rabakasa. Lerekosata. New realms of glory. Yasekete. Rakete de Rebusha de Rebushe. Roshi Bababa. Yebaria Sete. There's a breaking through. Breaking through. Oh, Rabaka said, that which was been has been held up is now being loosed in the spirit. Loosed in the spirit. Loosed in the spirit. Jesus made us worthy. He made us worthy. No longer are we unworthy. Because Jesus made us worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Ay, 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 asata. Oh, Rabakasete. The Lord said to remind you that you are a part of his body. He is the head. We are his body. Reko shababa. Rakate lokase. Robobaba sata. Ikobahaderebo shabadre sete. He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name. He'll give it to you, for the Father himself loves you. The Father himself loves you. The Father himself loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves us. Ibaradi ase ke mondre se ike bashata. Ibaradaboku se. Lord, we thank you. God, we just receive of you. We thank you, Father, that things are about to change. We can't do it in our own selves, Lord. We're nothing without you. But I'm so glad. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that we can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens us. Oh, Rabba Koshike Mababaya Sata. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. We praise you. Can you just, just give us a few more minutes? Let's pray with me in the spirit. Pray with me in the spirit. Thank you for rivers of living waters. Thank you for rivers. Rivers of living waters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory to God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Oh, God, we just give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Your word says that your eyes went to and fro throughout the earth, all earth, to show yourself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards you. Show yourself strong and mighty. You are mighty in battle. Glory to God. And we thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.